Well, now NASA has stirred up some new excitement. On Monday, the space agency will go public with something the rover Curiosity has discovered on Mars. Little green men, perhaps? Well, we asked Jeffrey Kluger, science editor for Time Magazine, who has the inside scoop. Great to have you with us, Jeff. Thank you for having me. What do we think this is going to be? Well, I hate to be the skunk at the picnic. <laughs> but no I green think, men. Yes, this has been a little inadvertently overhyped. It all stemmed from one bit of infelicitous phrasing from one NASA scientist who said this finding is one for the history books. But remember, what belongs in history books when you're a very technical NASA researcher is different from what you and I think. Mm -hmm. But not insignificant all the same, right? Not insignificant well, So what are we? So what do we think we're talking about here? My suspicion is, but nobody will know until, uh, until Monday at noon East Coast time, uh, is that they found some traces of methane, which are byproducts of metabolism, at least metabolism as we know of it on Earth. So there could be Martian bacteria that are producing this as a byproduct, but it could also be geological methane. It also could have formed it in other ways. It doesn't mean there's life. If the Martians were producing it, would that then mean if they found it, there yes. must be life presently, or would that mean there was life at one point in time? That's an excellent question. Um, if the methane were still there, since it breaks down very, very easily in the thin Martian atmosphere, it would mean that it was being generated. And in fact, there is traces of methane on Mars that are being generated in some ways, but again, perhaps geologically. But Mars may well have had past life, even if it's not extant life, and that's still pretty relevant. The planet now is basically a cold desert, right? That's I mean, right. What do we know about the atmosphere? The atmosphere is about 1% the density of Earth's, and it's about 95% carbon dioxide. So it's not exactly breathable or friendly for us. But about 3 billion years ago, Mars is thought to have had a much denser atmosphere. And we know from surface features that it was a very, very wet place. So it had about a billion years in which it could have begun cooking up life in some early stages. But then it went cold and dry. What are they going to do with all of this information, ultimately? Well, I. One thing that, that's important is that one of the reasons we go to places like Mars isn't so we can monetize it so that there are spin-offs. We get smarter, and that has a value that you can't necessarily put a price tag on. But it will tell us much more about our own evolution. It'll tell us about the prospects of life either on Mars or elsewhere in the solar system in the, in the deeper galaxy. I happen to be one of the people who believes that life is relatively easy with the right chemistry, with the right energy energy source, and with the right amount of time, you can cook it up. You talked about how inhospitable the planet is <clears throat> for us, but right. I mean, how far away are we realistically from sending a manned mission to Mars? Well, here, the answer to that is, as far away as we choose to be or need to be. Mm -hmm. Remember, we went from a standing start in 1961 to the surface of the moon in eight years, and we have all the technology we didn't have then. If we chose to be on Mars, make the financial and political commitment to go, we could be there in less than 10 years. As it stands now, 20, 30, who knows, until we simply make the choice to go. What would it cost to do that? Well, it, it really depends. When, it, when the numbers were first crunched back in the George H.W. Bush uh, era, it was put at half a trillion dollars. That's a deal breaker. But NASA has, NASA's budgeted at about 15, 16 billion dollars a year right now. I don't think you would have to increase that budget by more than 30 to 40 percent to get something truly moving. Elon Musk from mm -hmm. SpaceX says that he can get people to Mars in 15 years for about half a million dollars a seat. That's, uh, I haven't seen his, his, his math, but Sign that's not... Sign us up. Yeah, exactly. That's a bargain price ticket. Jeffrey Kluger, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me.